Hey everyone, welcome back for another video. My name is Tanya, for those of you that are new here, and I'm a watercolor artist. So fall's around the corner, and I've been wanting to paint little fall and Halloween paintings. So I've been just doing a whole bunch of them, and I wanted to share one with you today. But I am going to be showing you a whole bunch of others that I have created, so let me know if there's one in the group that you want me to paint for maybe a future video. So I hope you enjoy it. So today I wanted to show you a couple different cheaper versions of watercolor paper. So I went to Walmart and I picked this watercolor paper. Um, it seems like it's pretty good quality. Uh, it's called Bee Inspired Bee Paper Company. I've never really used it before. Um, so I'm gonna be trying that one out. And also I went to Five Below um, and I got this watercolor paper. And this is just HQ, whatever that means. That must be the company, I'm not even sure. But um, this one feels a little bit more like Bristol paper than watercolor paper. So I'm going to be using my watercolor brush pen. So I have a feeling that these are going to work really, really well on more of the Bristol type watercolor paper. Um, it's just a little bit smoother. And I think that the marker is going to flow a little bit better. So we're going to be trying this one out today. And another thing I wanted to show you was I've been inspired to... Um, paint some fall watercolors lately. I know that we're only August right now, but I can't wait for fall. I love fall. So I put together a couple different um, watercolors. So the acorns, um, the haunted house. I did a little kitty, a black cat wearing the witch's hat. I did some pumpkins. So I've got the, um, the caramel apple that I haven't framed yet. And I did a pumpkin pie that I didn't frame yet. And then the one that we're gonna be doing today is the three pump pumpkins in this like bushel basket. So that's the one we're gonna be doing today. So if you see one that you like here, please comment which one you'd like me to show you how to paint next. Um, I actually have several others that I did for Halloween, but I'm, I'll show those maybe in another video. Um, but anyways, so if you, have, if you like one of these and you wanna see how I created that, please let me know. And hopefully I'll get to it in another video. All right, but the one that we're going to be, the one that we're going to be creating today is this one. So I've got my paper here, and it's that one from um, Five Below that we're going to be using. It looks like this. If you have a Five Below next to you, um, and you want to go there and get this, this is what the cover looks like. And again, it's HQ. So I don't even know what what that means. It must just be the the brand. I don't know, but it's a cheaper version of watercolor paper. It's more like Bristol paper. So I'm hoping it works really, really well with my um, watercolor brush pens. So the brush pens that I'm going to be using today are the Arteza brand and the Tombow uh, brand. I really like both of these. I've been using the Arteza for years, and the Tombow I just started using like a month or two ago, and I really like them as well. They're both really, really different. I do do comparis comparisons in a different video. So if you wanted to see that, I think it was from several weeks ago. Um, so just go back on my page and look to see um, for that comparison video for those two um, brush pens. All right, so then I have some uh, watercolor uh, brushes here. I have a size 12 and a 3. I have my pencil, my eraser, and I have two cups of water, one for cool and one for warm, and my paper towel. All right, so we're just gonna be starting by sketching out this bushel basket. So I know you only see this part of the basket here, um, but you have to imagine that it's actually round um, so that the pumpkins can fit inside it. So it's gonna be a little bit of perspective here. You're gonna come around and make it almost like a little C curve. And I'm show gonna show you how to do that. So let's go and I don't want it too high because I want room for my pumpkins. So I think I'm going to make the basket maybe right there. So even though you're not going to see this part of the basket, the back part, that's where the pumpkins go in. So you're going to be covering that up with pumpkins. But that gives you an idea of um, the, the uh, oval that you need. All right, then I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to taper it a little bit because it's not straight. It is tapered. I'm going to follow along with that C curve a little bit and I'm gonna bring it down, and it's still tapered, and bring it down as far as you want. I think I'm gonna bring mine to here. And then it's got a couple different um, of those wood slats that hold the basket together. You can make those as thick as you want. And I'm being very um, 
I'm being very uh, loose with my sketches. And actually, I think I want to make this basket a little bit wider. So I'm going to go ahead. Actually, I'm just going to erase the whole thing and start over. Because I want to make this basket. I want to fill up my page a little bit. And it's okay if you do that. Um, I erase all the time. So once I start drawing something, I realize that I want it bigger or smaller or rounder. I'm going to make mine more like this. This big. All right, and then I'm gonna bring it down. All right, and again, I'm gonna make those little wood slats that hold it together. And I think I'm gonna do one on top, one on the bottom. It's got one on top, one in the middle, and one on the bottom. And make these as thick as you want. And have them come out a little bit from the actual basket here so it looks more a little 3D-ish. Pretty good. Go ahead and erase the lines that you don't want. And you can even lighten up your pencil at this point. If you wanted to use watercolor pencil, that would be another great thing because then it would just blend in nicely with your painting um, and just dissolve as you add the water. All right, so this is about all we're gonna be doing right now for this. And let's go ahead and just put like where our table would be. And then we're going to start with the pumpkins. I'm going to start with the bigger one, and then I believe I'm going to go to the one on the side and then the one way in the back, and then we'll add the leaves later. All right, so pumpkins, and I do have another video just on pumpkins. I think it's from about almost a year ago, maybe nine, ten months ago. So if you want to go back on my channel and look for the video on pumpkins, that shows you a little bit more detail on how to paint those. Um, so this video here is not going to really show you like much, I'm going to show you how to paint the pumpkins, but it's not going to be as detailed as that other video that um, that I did a while ago. All right, so we're going to start with the front pumpkin here. These are all ovals. So as they go around the pumpkin, they're going to taper off a little bit. So you're really going to see this front oval right here on the pumpkin. So that's what I did first. I did an oval, and I'm kind of tilting it a little bit. I, I want my pumpkins to be tilted in there. And then you're going to start with these like little C's and you're gonna start making the rest of those. You can make your pumpkin as big as you want, and then put a couple little bumps in the back too, because obviously the pumpkin is round, and these are in the back of the pumpkin also, but you only see the tops of them. Okay, and make sure that you get the, the shape right that you want. And actually, you know what, here again, as I drew it, I realized I want that pumpkin a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna redraw it. Maybe I'm gonna make these ovals a little bit bigger. Okay, and actually I'm gonna bring this down because I want it to look like it's like in the, in the bushel basket. So I'm gonna bring that down a little bit. Go ahead and lighten up your lines or erase the ones you don't want. And if you think that it needs to be rounded out a little bit more, definitely just start fixing it up. I mean, just because you draw something the first time doesn't mean that's the way it's gotta stay. I erase things all the time. Because sometimes I'll just sit back and look at it and be like, that's not right. And then use, you can draw in your little stem right there. Okay, so that's the first one. And the second one I'm gonna put over here, and actually I have a lot of room over here, so I'm gonna think I'm gonna make, make him a little bit squattier and um, wider. So let's try that. So there's the, the first oval. And actually here again, I want it to be in the basket. So let's make it look like it's in there. Erase the lines you don't want, and then put a little stem on him or her, I always say him in my videos, I don't know why. Oh, and then do those little bumps in the back too, because the pumpkin, obviously, like I said before, it's round all the way with those little ovals, so you see just the tops of them on the other side. All right, and then let's do a pumpkin right here on top. So this one here, I'm gonna start with where the stem goes, and then I'm gonna kind of bring it down from there, because I just wanna see where I want my pumpkin to be sitting on here because I don't want him too high. 
All right, now I'm gonna make all my little ovals. And then the ones in the back. And then a little stem, okay? And then I'm gonna draw in some, um, some leaves too. The leaves that I'm drawing in um, are just really generic. They're just very whimsical. They're not detailed. This is supposed to be a very whimsical painting, not a detailed, realistic painting. It's just a fun painting. So have fun with your leaves. Um, do them any shape you want. Go and search up leaves and pick a shape that you like. So I'm gonna start with a line going down and then my leaves are gonna be a little bit like that. Like that. So just whimsical. They just kind of go around like that. And then just have some peeking out from the back of the pumpkin. Um, you can have a few coming out this way. So mine are really bubbly, not realistic, just bubbly little leaves coming out every which way. Let's do another one up here. Very fun. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna go ahead and draw. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up my watercolor um, paintbrush. Oh, and I'm also gonna be bringing in, I didn't say this at the beginning of the video, but I have my Winsor Newton watercolors also. So I might be adding some of those in um, on top of the watercolor uh, paintbrush. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna paint this guy first. And there I go again, guy. I don't know why I always do that, but it could be a girl. And I'm gonna go around and I'm just gonna make those little ovals that we had made at the beginning. Go around your leaf. And then don't forget about those little bumps in the back too. And you can always add a little bit more orange if you want to. I'm gonna pick up my size three paintbrush and I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna blend that together. And the reason I didn't add the orange all the way is because I want a variation of orange. I want lights and darks. If you were to fill in your whole pumpkin, you wouldn't get that variation of lights and darks. It would just all be one color. And I don't want that. And we can always go in and add more later. And if you think it's a little bit too dark, what you could do is take your paper towel while it's still wet and just dab it a little bit and get some of that water and, and um, paint off there. There. So that's about all we're gonna do for that one right now. Make sure it goes all the way down to your basket because ba it's inside your basket. So make sure it's tucked in there and not floating outside. All right, wash off my brush. Now I'm gonna pick up, um, oh, and this was the Tombow and this is 905 if you're following along. Now I'm gonna tick, uh, pick up the Tombow 933 and I'm gonna do this pumpkin. It's a little bit more yellow. It's still orange, but it's got a lot more yellow in there. And I'm just going around my ovals again. And your pencil marks will be showing through, I'm not gonna lie. You, you, unless you erase them all the way, your pencil marks are gonna show through. It's just the way it is. Um, like I said before, use watercolor um, pens um, and pencils, and then maybe it'll dissolve a little bit more. So I'm gonna have, I'm gonna fill that front one in a little bit, give it some shadow, and then I'm gonna blend it out. So I start with the part that I, I painted and then I drag it over to my negative space. Here again, I start with the part that I painted and I drag it over to my negative space. And then just fill it in. Okay. And here again, make sure it's all the way down, tucked into that bushel basket. All right, and then this back one, I think I wanna do this one green. I had done green in my um, original painting, and I think I used this one. This one is the Tombow, and it's 126. So, oh, and you know what? I didn't erase my marks, my pencil marks too much on this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna erase some of these marks. So we're gonna go around those ovals again. It's almost like you're outlining it, but you're but you're really not because you're going to be blending it. Careful going around your leaves. If your leaves are in front of your pumpkin, careful going around those leaves. But if your pumpkin is in front of the leaves, then don't worry about it. 
and then make sure it's tucked in there. So you want it really tucked in there good so you don't see any negative space between the three. You want that middle part of the pumpkins to be really filled in. All right, I'm gonna take my watercolor paintbrush. Again, I'm going over the part that I laid the, the marker down first, and then I'm dragging it over to my negative space so that I've got lights and darks in there. Fill that all in. Go around your little leaves. Now I picked up a little bit of that orange from this pumpkin and that doesn't bother me. Um, because these watercolor markers will, um, anytime you lay water on them, even if you wait, you know, a while and you lay more water on them, some of the paint will keep coming off. So just be careful going around them. All right, that pumpkin looks really funky because my leaves are in front of it, but it looks really funky right now. All right, so we're gonna start on our basket. And I have this, actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna be using this one. This is my Arteza, and this one's called Sunset Yellow. So I'm gonna be coming in, and the basket's got all these, oh, you know what I forgot to draw? Was those lines going down, the actual, um, the slats of wood coming down. So I'm gonna draw that really quick. And here again, since you tapered it this way, make sure your, your lines are tapered as well. So it all goes together. And try and evenly space them apart. All right, so that's all I'm gonna draw. Now I'm gonna take my watercolor paintbrush and I'm gonna go around. And I'm gonna leave these slats alone because see how these slats I made a little bit of a different color? I'm gonna go around these slats. Or around the the trim part, I should say. Go around your little leaves. And I'm gonna leave some white space because I want, um, always think of where your light source is coming from. Even if it's a whimsical little painting like this, kind of leave like where you're gonna have your light source. So right now my light source is gonna be coming from this way. So I'm gonna have this part of my bushel basket darker than this side. So I'm gonna leave that alone. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a different color. And I'm gonna add the Tombow 902, just to give it a little sh more shadow on this side. I'm just going right over my other watercolor marker. I didn't even add water to it yet. So I'm gonna kind of shadow underneath these trim parts. That's about all I'm gonna do, maybe a little bit of shadow right there. Okay, we're gonna take our paintbrush and we're gonna start manipulating that paint a little bit so it flows. and bring it all the way to the end. So see how this is lighter than that? And if you don't like this yellowish color, um, I, I guess I used more of a brown color when I did this one. I don't even remember really what I used to tell you the truth. I just had my markers spread out all across my table and I don't even remember what I used. So this painting might look a little bit different than this one, but you get the idea. But use any color you want. Need a little more water. All right, I am going to add a little bit more orange. The same orange we did, but I'm just adding another layer towards the bottom of the pumpkin because it's shadowed down there. And maybe even come up a little bit on those ovals just to show a little bit of a shadow. Blend it in, going up this time. I'm not going all the way up because I still like that light of my pumpkin up on top. There. I'm gonna do the same thing with the same color that I used on this one. I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. Just add a little bit more dimension, a little bit darker down on the bottom. See how that gives it dimension already? It looks like it's pushed in there a little bit. Just water, bring it up. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. Add a little bit more down here. 
it just grounds it a little bit more. It just makes it seem like it's tucked into that bushel a little bit better. You don't want these pumpkins looking like they're floating in space. Okay. There, so that deepened that up. And then when that dries, if you want to add more to it, that's when you decide you, you, know, you can do that. Um, all right, so I'm gonna use a brown now on these slat parts here. And I'm using 969, and it's the Tombow. And I'm just gonna go around my leaves because these leaves are coming out of the bushel. And I'm gonna leave some negative space just so my paint has room to move around a little bit. So here again, I'm gonna leave a little bit of white space. Okay. And these are sticking out a little bit from the basket because it's the trim that's wrapped around that bushel. And the darker part of my bushel basket is this side. Now my paint was still a little bit damp here and I see it's bleeding through. I'm not sure you can see that. That doesn't bother me at all. I love it when the paints merge together. If that bothers you, then wait till the rest of the basket is dry and then you can go ahead and apply um, the color next to it, but it does not bother me. All right, I'm gonna add a little water. Just make sure it's all blended, otherwise you'll have like a little ridge there and you don't really want that, you just want it all blended. Make sure that you hit all that paint. and just let it flow together. See how this is really coming in now? That's okay, because I'm gonna give this kind of um, like a, a wood type finish in a second anyways. So we left that negative space. See how beautifully that blends in right away? Make sure you hit all your ink there. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually draw in some of those little lines Maybe not everywhere, but a little bit. Oh, one other thing I forgot to tell you at the beginning of the video is we're gonna be coming in at the very end with our Micron um, archival ink, and we're gonna be making some black marks um, just to kind of finish off our painting a little bit, like with the little nails and the slats and stuff like that, and maybe just outline the leaves like I did here. So we're gonna do that right at the end. So I forgot to mention that to you. All right, so we're gonna take our water, and we're just gonna kind of work that in a little bit. Not too much, because you want to see those slap marks. You don't want it blended in completely with the background. I still want to see those, those marks there. Okay. That's pretty. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start going around our leaves. Um, and I am picking up the Tombow 158. And I want green leaves, like this one. Um, you could do red, yellow, orange, whatever color leaves. You could even do a whole bunch of different ones. That'd be really pretty too. So this one here is a different green than that pumpkin that we did at the beginning. And I'm just going around and I'm, I'm just like outlining them because we're going to be bringing in, we're going to be bringing in the ink um, towards the center. So I'm just outlining a little bit. And if some of your lines are starting to get blurred together, that's where the ink comes in at um, the archival ink, the Micron pen at the end that just kind of crispens up your edges just a little bit more if you've lost some of that detail. Okay. So I outlined them all. And again, these were in front of that pumpkin. And now I'm just gonna come in with just water and I'm going to bring that ink watercolor marker into my leaf. So I'm activating the ink on the outside that we just did and I'm bringing it in. And I'm just going in little, little circles. And if you think that there's certain sections that you need more, then definitely add more, add more of your watercolor marker to it. Or you can wait till this dries and then decide and then add more once it dries. 
Okay, so I think I'm going to let those dry and then I'm going to give it a little bit more dimension with um, some more ink. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over my, um, with the same brown we used before, the 969, I'm going to be doing the stems of the pumpkin. Now my leaves are still wet here. It may spread out a little bit. I'm not too worried about it. And then I'm just going to go ahead and fill it in. All right, um, at this point, I am gonna go ahead and blow dry it. That way I can give it another coat. I just wanna make sure everything is dry before I do that. Okay, so everything's dry. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add a little bit of deeper um, tones to this. I'm gonna take my um, Winsor Newton and I'm just gonna take some browns and some yellows and some oranges and I'm just gonna deep up, deepen up certain areas that I feel need a little deepening up. And again, I'm just using my size three paintbrush. And you could do this part with the watercolor markers as well. It doesn't really matter. I, like I said, I, I like to go back and forth between my brush pens and my regular watercolors. And I'm gonna deepen up my orange. I just feel like mixing the two, you get the best of both. And I'm gonna put a little more yellow on this, this pumpkin over here. And maybe a little bit of that orange towards the bottom, just to ground it a little bit down here. Just dabbing on a little bit more of that orange color. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna take a little bit of my green. I believe this is my sap green. And I'm gonna add a little bit of it over here too. Just to deepen up the bottom of this pumpkin. All right, and you know what? Let's go ahead and add a little bit more of this green that we used on our leaves. Just a little bit more here and there. Not the whole leaf, but just a little bit more that I think it needs a little bit more. Another little layer. I'm gonna pick up my size um, 12, and I'm gonna do a little bit of a green wash back here. Now, I don't mind that when I go against my bushel here, it's gonna bleed a little bit. It's okay if you bump up to that because I'm gonna be adding some um, brown in here anyways. Just make sure one side matches where the other side is. So it's like your tabletop or whatever. All right, I am going to add a little brown now. And I'm just going over, it's wet, so it's wet on wet technique. And I'm just making little lines like that. So however it dries, it dries. All right, um, I'm gonna go ahead and dry this and then we're gonna come in with, um, no, you know what? I do want to do one more thing. I think I'm going to bring in a little bit of that darker brown. Just to give it a little bit of more dimension on this side. Just some lines coming down. Make it look a little bit more rustic. There. All right. And then we're going to, I'm going to dry this and then we're going to add a little bit more detail with our archival. Um, actually, you know what? I forgot to do the splatter marks in the back. Pick whatever color you want. I'm just going to go ahead and do the orange that I had done on, um, on this original one. So I just made a nice wash of orange and I'm just splattering it with two paintbrushes. 
just gives a little more dimension in the back. Now, if you went on part of your pumpkins and basket and all that and you don't like it, just take a clean paper towel and just pounce it off your leaves and it will pick up most of it. Just be careful going around all your stuff. There. Yeah, that did good. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and dry this and then we're gonna just do some finishing touches. Okay, so it's nice and dry and I'm gonna take my Micron um, pen, it's archival ink, and I'm using 05, so it's a little bit thicker. And I'm gonna go around my stems here. I'm gonna make like a little circle at the top, come down, you could give it a little bit of graining if you want to. Okay, I'm gonna also do that center line I did on my leaves at the beginning when I was first drawing them out, and then I'm gonna outline them a little bit. Okay, there, so we just did our leaves. Now I'm gonna come up with just a little bit of that ridging on my pumpkin. Not all the way, just kind of where we did that deepening of the pumpkin down towards the bottom. Just a little bit. And here with this one too. Then I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna do all these little slats on the bushel. So I kind of just outlined it right now. And I'm not going all the way to the end because that's the lighter part of our bushel basket. Bring it down on the ends here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add these like little nails. And they're just like little ovals. You don't even have to fill them in all the way. And then I'm gonna do those um, lines that we had done at the beginning. The slats that are coming down. Now just make sure when you do a slat up here, you follow with the slat down there because you don't want this to look weird because that slat goes all the way from the top to the bottom. So where you do one line, just continue it down, but just skip that middle part right there. All right, I'm gonna do the end here of that one. And then I think I'm gonna do just a little bit on my table, just a couple little, so it's almost like a graining of wood or something. Okay. And I think that's about it. If you wanna add more to it, actually I might come up a little bit more this way, like that one. There. I think that looks really, really cute. You can add this pen wherever you want. It just crispens up your edges a little bit and just makes it come to life a little bit more. So there you go. So this was the one I did the other day, and this is the one I did now. And actually, this paper that I used is pretty good. It's more, like I said, like a Bristol board, and the watercolor markers worked really, really well on it. So I was pleased with that. Thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you liked it and learned a little something. And if you did like it, please give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to comment in the comment section which painting uh, out of that little grouping that I showed you at the beginning of the video, uh, which one you want me to paint for you in the future. And you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And please don't forget to subscribe if you want more videos like this one. Have a great day. Bye.